In my last video, to drizzle or not to drizzle, I posited and then demonstrated why I feel it is always beneficial to drizzle. Now, conventional thinking states that you only should drizzle if your image is undersampled, and that if your image is adequately sampled, drizzling at best won't do anything for you, though it can weaken your image. And that is something I have never found to hold true, ever. So when a person messaged me after that video and said, would it not have been better just to upsample the image times two since the telescope and camera were otherwise perfectly sampled? I decided to explore the question. It's a good question and comes up in some of the forums that I frequent. And if you read the more technical stuff, it's technically answered with lots of formulae and esoteric sounding statements about how drizzling is best avoided with adequately sampled images and how it can degrade those images. And I find such statements honestly to be postulates, things that are said and taken as true without evidence. So what we're going to do today is experiment, this time with another image, the image of the Ghost Nebula, VDB-141. Now every scientist knows sometimes theories don't hold up to the test of reality. And we're going to test the assumption that upsampling perfectly sampled information is better than drizzling. The image above was shot with a Celestron C8, a 203mm aperture schmidt cassegrain telescope with a Player One Ares M camera in good seeing conditions, which made for perfectly sampled conditions. This time we're going to compare and contrast the original information, you can see it above on the left, with resampled times two information, which you can see in the middle, and finally, drizzled times two information, which you can see on the right. I shot this image just last January. It was one of the first images that I ever shot with the Ares M camera. It was a dead cold Canadian winter night with temperatures dropping around minus 25 C. And as well, it was also a moonless night. And with the stars almost not twinkling at all, it was the perfect time to go after this challenging target. Now, by and large, I'm going to develop each of these images in exactly the same way. I will have to vary a little bit when I get up to the curves, and I'll explain why then. So for now, I'm starting out on the Luminance channel, and I'm running Blur Exterminator on each image, correct only, which will round out the stars in case there were any errors in tracking or perhaps any aberrations in collimation. After that, I'm going to then run Blur Exterminator on each derivation again in the default mode, to deconvolve the stars and sharpen up the non-stellar structure. The undrizzled, unresampled version all the way on the left and the resampled version in the middle look more or less the same because they are the same, or more or less the same. All that's happened is the algorithm that processes the resampling simply makes all the pixels take up more space. One pixel now takes up two by two pixels, doubling the width and breadth of the image and quadrupling the number of pixels that it takes up or the amount of information that must be saved to memory. But the drizzled image already stands out as different. The space is darker and the image is more contrasty. Now, Blur Exterminator has run both in the correct mode and the default mode on each image. The image on the left looks the least contrasty, but it's not bad. It's nice, I think that the space is smooth and well portrayed, and you can see a good bit of detail within the image. The resampled version in the middle is very similar you don't really see additional detail, but you wouldn't expect that with simply a resampled image scaled up. However, the space looks a little darker. Now, if PixInsight's resampling algorithm works anything like the algorithm found in Photoshop, when you upsample an image, in this case, we've upsampled times two, the algorithm must make some guesses as to what belongs in all that new space. And I'm guessing that in regions of space, the algorithm is just guessing more dark space. So we see darker space and perhaps a slightly more contrasty image overall. Now the drizzled image. The drizzled image is definitely different from the other two. It is more contrasty, but the way it goes about filling the space created by upsampling times two is more sophisticated. Technically, drizzling is an algorithm known as variable pixel linear reconstruction. The algorithm aims specifically to preserve the photometry and resolution of the original data, weights the input of each pixel according to the statistical relevance of the information it contains, and also works to remove geometric distortion. Put into plain English, what this means is that drizzling takes a single pixel of information, expands it into two by two pixels or four pixels, and then makes what you might think of as a very educated guess on what information should be in those three additional pixels by looking at the information of all the surrounding pixels and using that information to posit what should be in the space between. This means there is guesswork in drizzling. Its outcomes are not perfect, and it may make some errors here and there, 
but it also can help you resolve information that you otherwise could not resolve and get a more detailed representation of your image than you could otherwise get. Now, what I see happen a lot on the forums is somebody will zoom in on the stars of a drizzled and non-drizzled image and not find that much difference between them. Occasionally, they may find a double star in the drizzled image that they didn't find in the undrizzled image, but then they'll say, see, you don't get that much out of drizzling, it's not worth the effort. And then you also get the statements, oh, drizzling takes more time and it uses up way more memory. I mean, it's such an absurd argument in this day and age. Drizzling an image takes, I don't know, five or 10 extra minutes in, in stacking. And so what if an undrizzled image takes 50 megabytes of memory and a drizzle times two image takes 200 megabytes? What does this matter in this day and age of hard drives with multiple terabytes? I mean, my computer is 46 terabytes of hard drive space, and that's just the computer. Anyway, if all you're going to do is look at some stars, then yeah, apart from occasionally catching a double star someplace, drizzling might not seem to be all that worth it. But as we saw with the Hamburger Galaxy, you have to push forward in development. So I'm going to carry forward with development by extracting the stars from each image, and then I'm going to run a histogram stretch on each image and then run the noise exterminator. Typically, after I run the histogram stretch is when I run noise exterminator. So I'm going to do that as well, and then we'll come back and re-examine each image. So here we are with the histogram stretched and noise exterminator run on each image. And just as we saw in the last video, where I compared the drizzled image of the hamburger galaxy to the non-drizzled image, we can see that there is a difference widening between the drizzled image and the regular stack data all the way on the left and the resample times two data in the middle. The regular image all the way on the left and the resampled image look more or less similar with the resampled image looking slightly more contrasty. But the drizzled image on the right looks sharper and crisper. It is not just more contrasty, but the details within the image are more refined and the darker space shows the detail that is emerging more within it. Even so, at this point, I don't think there is that much difference between the images. So let's push the developing even further. Now I'm going to go ahead and process the RGB information. I'll divide out the RGB information into unchanged, resampled times two, and drizzled times two information, process each set of information separately, remove each star plate separately, add the luminance star plate back to the RGB star plate, and then add the combined RGB information to each appropriate luminance channel. Before adding that RGB information though, I'm going to do one final step and adjust its curves. To keep the playing field as level as possible, I'm just going to use a simple two-point S-curve on the luminance channel and then lift the saturation channel for each one. Though I will have to do a custom S-curve on the luminance channel for the drizzle channel because the drizzle information is more contrasty than the two images with non-drizzled information. Once the curves are run on each image, I'll run noise exterminator over each image again because lifting the brightness is going to lift out a little bit more noise that'll become visible in the process of transforming the curves. And when it's done, we get these three images. And I'll now use the LRGB combination tool to add the luminance to each of these RGB channels. Adding the luminance to the RGB information really brings out all the beautiful detail. And the whole process only takes a moment. But when it's done, I'm going to have to run the Curves Transformation tool on each image again, because adding the luminance will have changed the total LRGB characteristics somewhat. And my goal here is to bring out the best of the beauty of each of these images out. Because, as we observed in the development of the Hamburger Galaxy, the advantages of drizzling show up the more you develop an image. And that's quite simply because, whether inferred or actual, drizzling gives you more information to work with in the developing process. The image is like a construction project, and drizzling gives you more wood to work with. When this whole process is done, I'm just going to pop over to Affinity Photo and add the stars back into each image simply by dragging over the appropriate star plates over the image and setting the stars to a screen composite. Then I'm going to rotate each image 90 degrees counterclockwise, and we can take a look at the final outcomes. Here are the three finished images. I've mixed them up. Can you tell which one is the drizzled? which one is the resampled, and which one is the undrizzled and unresampled image? Take a moment and consider them. I'll zoom in on each of them. Pause if you're still working on it, because in a moment, I'm going to put up the answers.
Let's take a closer look at each image. Each one has its own pros and cons. This is the original stacked image. No resample, no drizzle. And the advantage here is the stars. Both resampling and drizzling have a way of amplifying any defects within stars. Compare the blue and red pair just below and to the left of the main nebula here with the resampled version of this star here. And then the drizzled version of this star here. Both resampling and drizzling attempt to interpolate whatever information should be in those additional 3 pixels per 4 pixels that they create when an image is upscaled. Resampling makes a fairly simple guess, and drizzling makes what you might think of as a very educated guess using complicated algorithms that analyze the information in each pixel around the pixel that is being upscaled. In any case, artifacts like these are easy to correct using a variety of techniques, such as blending the original stars with the drizzled stars, or selective in-painting tools, or even additional deconvolution. We're looking again at the unresampled, undrizzled image. And now I have gone ahead and cropped into the pillar on the right of the nebula. Notice what looks sort of like a double star there, but it's also more like a smear. The points of light over the pillar is poorly defined, somewhat like a dash. I guess you might think of it as something like a slightly divided dash, and that's as much as we can tell with one-to-one. -one. In the resampled times two version here, we've actually lost resolution on that star, and the light over the pillar looks more like a smear. Or it could just be a double star resolving out. The light is still fairly smeared, and it's uncertain what the structure represents. Now let's switch to the drizzled image. The drizzled image resolves, or at least appears to resolve, based on its algorithm, what's going on here much more. And this does indeed look to be a single star with some of its light reflecting off the top of the dust pillar. Now we'll compare and contrast the central body of the nebula beginning with the one-to-one -one information. To the right is what we might call the ghost head, and to the left are what I think of as the praying ones, the praying maiden on the left and the praying goblin on the right. Now I would describe the sharpness of this image as okay, not great, but okay. All the structures, however, are a bit soft, Let's see what happens when we look at this image resampled times two. The resampled version creates a bit more of what appears to be a resolution in the image. It might be illusory. It might be based simply on how Blur Exterminator processes the extra pixels that upscaling threw in. But nonetheless, it does give us an appearance of additional detail. Watch as I switch back and forth between the two images. Here's the original image, unresampled, undrizzled. Here's the resampled image times two. Here's the original image again. And here's the resampled times two image again. Now let's compare this structure to the drizzled times two image. The drizzled image immediately presents us with a substantial improvement. There is more sharpness and more detail to be seen in the praying ones. In the shadow of the ghost head, there is more refinement of the dark shadow and more subtlety in the transition between the change of the dark shadow and the star center right, and center right and lower center right in the light given off by the bright star against the nebulous structure. We can see what appears to be the beginning of delicate brush strokes. Let's compare the drizzled image to the unresampled, undrizzled image. Here is the unresampled, undrizzled image. And here's the drizzled times two image. Note also that in the Drizzle Times 2 image, we have finer, better deconvolved stars. Now let's compare the Drizzle Times 2 image to the Resampled Times 2. Here's the Resampled Times 2 image now. The image appears immediately brighter, but the stars are less deconvolved, less refined. And while we can see more detail in this image than we saw in the unresampled, undrizzled image, overall, the information in the structure of the DSO is not as sharp and the shadow transitions are not as subtle. Let's transition back to the Drizzle Times 2 so that we can compare. We are now back into the Drizzle Times 2 image. Now I'll set these images at this crop each side by side. We can see that the unresampled, undrizzled image appears to give us more stars, but I suspect that's because Blur Exterminator is more likely to interpret mere blurs as stars. But on the other hand, and beneficially, it gives us fewer star artifacts though detrimentally to the image and of particular concern, fine detail of the structure within the DSO is lacking. 
Top center, we can see the resampled times 2 image. And there we have even brighter stars, more dominant in the image than in the original image. Also, I suspect a byproduct of the way Blur Exterminator interpolates the lack of information. After all, in resampling times 2, where the information is simply upsampled times 2, the upsampling is merely making rough guesses as to what should be in there. And Blur Exterminator is having to work with those rough guesses. Those rough guesses do appear to give us more information or more structure within the DSO, but it's also rougher, not as refined, and, and probably not as accurate as what we would get with Drizzly. And on lower right, with the Drizzled image, we get better deconvolved stars that do not predominate the image, though we do get some artifacts that may in fact be sharpened aberrations within the stars themselves. You can see that in the bright star over the central head of the nebula. That aberration is there in all three images. It's just a bit more detailed than the drizzled image. And very beneficially, we get much improved structure within the deep sky object. The praying maiden and the praying goblin are much sharper and more refined. The wisps of gases around them are more detailed. The structure and whiffs along the right edge of the central structure of the nebula are more detailed. And we can see the starlight shining against the material of the nebula, center right and lower right, like delicate brush strokes, which was not visible at all in either the resampled times 2 or the unresampled, undrizzled image. What we can see here is that drizzling does far more than just differentiate between blobs of light that are stars and potentially double or triple stars. Drizzling goes a long way toward refining and resolving the information within the non-stellar structure of deep sky objects. And as to the argument that drizzling is pointless unless the image is undersampled, frankly, the argument is ludicrous. The outcome simply points out otherwise. This image was shot with a Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain telescope with 203 millimeters or 8 inches of aperture, and a Player One Ares M camera using ZWO LRGB filters and the seeing that night was good, meaning that this camera and telescope combination were perfectly sampled. So ultimately, if the camera and telescope are perfectly sampled to the seeing conditions, your image will not come out better by simply upsampling the information, because drizzling accomplishes so much more than just adding more pixels to the image. And whatever anybody says, test after test after test demonstrates that. Any arguments that it's not worth the processing time are, well, to me, they're absurd. If you're going to spend all nights or multiple nights shooting an image, does it really matter if you spend an extra 10 or 20 minutes drizzling your information? And as I said earlier, in this day of multiple terabyte hard drives, what does it matter if the final image takes up a few hundred extra megs? Drizzling won't change the size of the subs, just the size of the masters and the final image. So when processing an image, I can't see any benefit at all to upsampling. Resampling compared to drizzling is, how do I put it? Resampling is like a lobotomized version of drizzling. Just drizzle, in the end your images will benefit. And you can see the completed Ghost Nebula image at the Sky Story Astro Bin. The link is in the description. All right, well, for me, that's the end of this topic. It's time to move on to other subjects. There's a lot of ground to cover. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Now get out there and shoot the sky.